Welcome to this quick crash course in Edpuzzle. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and go to edpuzzle.com or Google it, and then go ahead and sign up as a teacher. You can see that they have a lot of these tours and tutorials. The whole site is really easy to use and they have, uh, it's very intuitive and they have a lot of like good help options. So if you're confused about something, it, they definitely have uh, resources to help you figure out what all this stuff does. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just log in since I already have an account. One thing that I want to point out about logging in is that you need to be logged into the Barracuda filter. And so you go to login.harker.org when you're at school and the uh, filter thing pops up. Uh, one thing that's unfortunate is that the Harker filter will block uh, Edpuzzle if you're not signed up for the uh, into the filter. Usually what happens is that the filter login will pop up automatically and they just, you know, put your credentials in and, and get into the site no problem. But occasionally what happens is nothing pops up and so the website just fails to load. And then uh, students think that, you know, the website is broken and then they, they have a good excuse to not do the homework or whatever. Um, and, and so I would recommend um, explicitly telling students to log in to the filter at login.harker.org. Uh, if they're at school before they go to Edpuzzle so that that problem is taken care of. So anyways, once you're in, um, there's sort of three major pages. There's the search part is where you look for new videos uh, or new lessons. Um, my content is where you keep track of the videos that you have customized or you use in your class. And then my class um, keeps track of your students and your classes and, and what have they done. And let's go ahead and look at my classes first since we're already there. So you can see these are the different some examples of different videos uh, or lessons that I've assigned and when they're due and how many students have completed it. Um, so let's say we can see um, obviously, obviously here it says how many students have completed the video. We can see in more detail uh, which actual students and you can see there's a couple students here that are not actually students. Uh, so this one I created just to sort of experience this from the student side so I can see exactly what happens when you're a student. But anyways, you can see um, if a student has watched the video or not, which I find really nice because that's a way of you know keeping them accountable. If I assign them to watch a video, um, I wanna know if they actually did it or not. Um, you can also see what percent of the questions that they got right um, and, and when they did it. And um, it, it tells you, um, I believe, how much time they spent on it. Um, I remember that from before, although I'm not seeing that right now. Um, if you click on a particular student, you can also see um, what questions did they get right and what questions did they get wrong. You can see if they watched a part of the video um, more than once, which is interesting to see if part of your video maybe is not very clear or it's just something that's hard. You can also get an overview with this questions uh, part here of all of the different questions and uh, which questions are students getting correct and which ones are they having the most trouble with. The other thing that I want to point out here, which I, I probably should have said at the beginning, is that it's really easy to add a class. You just go over here and hit add class and put a name. And once you do that, of course, it's ask you to invite students. And the easiest way, in, in my opinion, is just to have them use this code to sign up for the class. You can also put a link or something on Athena and if they click the link, they'll get automatically signed up for your class. So anyways, my classes uh, sort of tab, it keeps track of what have you assigned and what have students done and how can you keep them accountable. The next thing I wanna show you is the search tab and this is where you can find new videos. So in the Edpuzzle part, there's all kinds of teachers have already made lessons with the video, but also this other stuff added on top. Uh, and, and so you can use those. You can also get YouTube videos. This is the one that I prefer because I like to use my own lessons or my own screencast, but you don't have to. Uh, and there's a lot of other options uh, here as well. And so if you have a link, let's say this is a screencast that I went ahead and uploaded on Inferred Law to YouTube, you just the link here and then you search for it you see that the video has popped up and now I'm sort of editing or creating my video lesson and so th there's four major things that you can do you can crop the video add an audio track 
put out audio notes and add quizzes, which are basically questions or comments. So cropping is basically if there's a part of the video you don't want to include in it, you can easily just move the slider around and say, you know, I'm not interested in that part of the video. Since I usually make my own screencasts, um, I don't usually do much cropping because I already have done that in the creation of the screencast. The next thing that you can do is add an audio track overlay. And, and so basically, let's say if you find a video that ha has really good pictures or um, it, it's a neat video, but you want to explain it in your own words or in your own way, um, you can do this with this. So it'll the video will remain the, the same what's on the screen, but you just start recording. And then it now it's whatever I say is being uh, overlaid as the audio. So for example, let's stop it and play it back. So one thing that's kind of weird to me is that if, if you do this, which I guess it kind of makes sense, it wants or it requires you to overlay the whole video. So you can't have some of the audio from the original video and some of the audio that you overlaid. You have to choose one or the other. Um, so it's not something I do again because I, I use my own videos, but that's, I think, a cool option if you're using someone else's videos. The other thing that you can do, which is maybe a, a, a little smaller scale, is to use audio notes. So basically, an audio note is it'll play the audio from the video, and then when it gets to your note, it'll pause the video, it'll play the audio that you've added, and then once it's done playing that, it'll continue with the video. And so for example, let's move this here, and then let's, at this point, add an audio note and so to add something you just click on this button here and it'll add it at 40 seconds into the video you can move around however you want and so now it's recording this uh, audio note and if I stop it and so if we go back and play the video now um, so you can see that it just started playing what I was saying a second ago and you can add these notes wherever you want um, to clarify or to explain something in your own words uh, whatever uh, so anyways, once we have the audio notes added, the other thing we can do, which I think in my opinion is maybe the most useful thing that I do use a lot, is the quizzes. And so you can, at any point in the video, you can add a question. And so you can put uh, like long uh, free response questions, you can do multiple choice questions, and you can do just add a comment, so just text that pops up. The multiple choice questions are really nice because it'll automatically grade. And so you can in, uh, obviously correct and incorrect answers. Another thing that's cool about this, in my opinion, is that you can put feedback. So that's kind of silly, but if someone made a mistake here, then when they answer this one, uh, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll kind of see why they screwed up the question or they'll help them figure it out. And you can put in as many of these questions as you want. And to me, uh, this is the real power of Edpuzzle because I want my students to be thinking about it actively, whatever I'm showing on the screen. And I, I think all too often they just kind of passively sit there, but these, these questions force them to really think about it because they know that uh, they, they can see as the video is playing just like we can. Um, so let's save this. You can see this little question mark pops up in the, uh, the play bar. And so students can see that when they're watching the video. And so they know like, okay, in one minute there's going to be a question, so I better pay attention um, and be thinking about this, so I'm ready to answer that question. And then answering the question gives them feedback, it gives me feedback, I think it makes the video a lot more educational. And so anyways, once you have cropped the video to make only the parts you want, added an auto audio track over it if you want it, or put audio notes, and then added questions or comments, then you're ready to uh, finish the video. And so once you hit save or finish, this menu will pop up. And here's where you just assign it to uh, different classes. So I'm going to assign this to the demo class. Another thing that I, I think is really neat about Edpuzzle is the prevent skipping option. And so that way, um, if I do a, a screencast, maybe that has a solution at the end, uh, I think some students might be tempted to just go to the end and get the answer and then just kind of forget 
all the important methods in between. But if you do this, it basically stops that. I mean, they, they can get around it by just having it play on their computer and not actually watching it, but uh, it le at least makes it harder to do that. Um, you can also add a due date. And so have it, yeah, do whenever you want. And then if you hit send, uh, then it'll it'll show up in there. When they log into their class, it'll, it'll show up that they have this assignment that's due. The other thing that you can do uh, is just share it with anyone with this link. You can either embed it, like you could put it right into your Athena paid page with this, or you can just share the link. One disadvantage of doing it this way is that you won't get all the feedback. So it won't tell you which students has watched the video or not. It won't tell you how they answered questions. So this is a nice way to share stuff, but it doesn't give you quite as much feedback. So in general, I think assigning to a class is better. The last thing that I, I want to just talk about quickly is, is how I use Edpuzzle overall. I think main ways that I use it is we're doing this sort of coding in physics and it has a lot of like technical information to get across. And so I think this is great because the students can get it at home. I also um, made some videos about how to problem solve and sort of went through things really slowly. And, and sometimes we just don't have the time in class to do it as carefully as I would like and to really go through a problem uh, with a, a systematic method. And so again, this is nice to do some of that outside of class. I have also made some of these uh, review uh, screencasts and just like added questions on top to make sure that students are thinking about it. And I think that's pretty neat. And so I think you can, uh, you can do a lot with this. It's a pretty neat tool. It's very easy to use. And uh, yeah, I encourage you just to dive in and, and try it out. It's, um, it's, it's not hard to get started. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching.